What I want to share in this video is a practical coping skill for anxiety that has a basis within the Buddha Dharma. And the source for this technique, this insight, this inspiration comes, I believe as I recall, from a podcast that I heard by Paul Haller. He is one of the key teachers at the San Francisco Zen Buddhist Center. And I really love listening to his podcast. He's got a very mellow voice. He's got deep insight. And when he is speaking to the students who are engaging in a, an extensive meditation session uh, or practice period, he, he really does help through his words and through the poems that he quotes uh, the persons listening to get into a deeper state of appreciation for the nature of fundamental reality, which is, at the end of the day, the here and now. What has me thinking about this right now is the fact that I'm anticipating taking a trip. And truth be told, I don't really like to travel. I'm kind of a homebody. And part of the reason is that I have anxieties about what might happen in the course of a trip. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, if I could, like, in this context of a Star Trek uh, technology, beam myself to some place like the, the Dunhuang Caves in China or the temples at Kyoto, Japan, I mean, I would love to see those things. But the whole process of, you know, getting on a plane and staying at hotels and, you know, dealing with all the various and sundry uncertainties associated with travel, you know, I just don't like it very much. Um, I, you know, after I have come back from a trip, I often have wonderful memories and I have appreciated uh, the benefits and, and have a positive feelings about having gone on a trip. But in, you know, in the anticipation of it, um, to be honest, I kind of dread it. I won't get into the specifics of what my fantasies are, but leave it to say that when I was in college at the University of Michigan, when I was an undergraduate there, you know, that was my first exposure to being in therapy. And my psychiatrist at the time <laughs> Uh, where I attended twice weekly psychoanalytically oriented sessions, um, basically diagnosed me as psychoneurotic. Now, in the context of my conversion experience in the late 70s, of course, I, I reconciled, I think, without you know, sort of my will or direct accomplishing of such, uh, a reconciliation of various conflicting aspects within my personality, I think, uh, and achieved a kind of peace of mind that I never had really thought would be possible. But that doesn't totally erase the fact that, you know, to put it in blunt, um, you know, terms, you know, I can be a worry wart. So you can apply it to whatever your particular, your particular anxieties are, but the thing that Paul Haller, and I don't even recall if this was a suggestion he made, but I really latched on to it as having uh, great utility so that when I am on a trip, what I do is I say to myself at any point in time when I'm feeling a bit anxious, I say, what's happening now? What's happening now? What's happening now? And invariably, since I haven't really encountered any tremendous crises on any trips I've been on, you know, I note that whatever is happening now is something that I can face, that I can tolerate, that I can um, handle without um, a great deal, if any, distress. So, you know, it really relates to the Buddhist notion that, you know, a lot of our anxieties, our concerns, our worries have to do with, you know, what things that have happened in the past or things that we anticipate happening in the future. 
But there is the eternal now, the here and now, which uh, not only is a place of um, refuge and safety and security in some fundamental sense, it really is reality, the only reality. So let me just leave that tip with you that, you know, if it's for you, you know, going to the dentist or, you know, facing a particular social situation or, um, you know, having a, a particular stressful context in your work environment, whatever it may be, you may want to try this uh, as a sort of internal mantra, if you will, to say to yourself, what's happening now? And really the corollary question or implication is, is what's happening now something I can cope with adequately? And, you know, in the limited amount of time that I've tried doing this, uh, I've never found there to be an occasion when I said to myself, oh my gosh, no way. So, you know, give it a try, and um, I hope this is of some use, and I would recommend uh, listening to the podcasts from the San Francisco Zen Center uh, in general, and most particularly those that are done by Paul Haller. Namo Mita Boots. Namo Mita Boots. Namo Mita Boots.